Hey guys, today's video, we're actually going to be touching up on 10 weapons that I would definitely set aside some time to obtain. Now, essentially guys, with this video, I'm going to break down what the weapon is, where you can get it, um, is the catalyst required if it's an exotic, what's its versatility, and what's the weapon's lethality. Now, of course, some of these weapons, there's a lot more involved in obtaining them, so I will link in the description below how to obtain each of these weapons. So at number one, and there's no specific order to this, guys, we have accurate and I definitely have it with the catalyst. So what is it? It's an exotic power slot shotgun. It will most likely stay in the power heavy slot after Forsaken. Now where you can get it guys, I've got it right here on the screen in front of you. There's a lot more involved uh, that, that you can actually watch a video here from Datto that will explain how to do everything in more depth. And I'm sure if you haven't actually completed the quest for this gun, you probably have it already sitting in your inventory. Now is the catalyst required? It's not really required, but it does help tremendously, guys. You get a plus 40 reload speed, and you also get the deeper pockets perk, which increases those ammo reserves. Now, the versatility of the gun, the gun is a shotgun. So, of course, you got to be close to your enemies, but it's super lethal even in PvE. I know a lot of the gameplay here is from PvP. Understand that a lot of these weapons, whenever I test them and review them, they're from a PvP perspective. But PvE, it's very nasty. I love using it for, for things like majors, even for dogs still, and it does a really good job. And if you get that catalyst, well, it's even better now. At number two, Whisper of the Worm, with the catalyst, of course. Now, Whisper is essentially Black Hammer from Destiny 1. It's an exotic sniper rifle that sits in your power slot and will remain in your heavy power slot after Forsaken. Now, in order to get this gun, guys, you have to actually do the mission, The Whisper. It's a time-limited event, which appears from Friday to Monday on the weekly reset time. And you start it by doing a Taken public event in Io's Lost Oasis area. You then have to kill a specific yellow bar enemy. You then enter a creepy portal, and then you have to complete a mission within 20 minutes. Again, guys, there will be a link in the description below with more depth of this. Is the catalyst required, though? Yes. The catalyst turns an already truly power weapon into an Omega power weapon. It adds the perk box breathing, which ups the damage tremendously when zoomed in. Now, in order to gain this catalyst, you have to run through the Whisper Heroic mission each weekend for around three to four weekends, depending on how many of the chests you find. And again, guys, down below will be another link to the location of all of these chests. Now, what is the weapon's versatility? Well, the gun is a sniper and it requires you to land crit shots in order to take advantage of the white nail perk. So the long game is, is where it's best at. Now, as far as lethality, it is the most powerful weapon in Destiny 2 right now. You throw that catalyst on it, the sniper is truly in a class of his own. So we got, what, nearly a month before Forsaken drops, guys. Devote some time, man, to getting this weapon. At number three, guys, is Midnight Coup. This is a lightweight kinetic hand cannon that will be moved to the primary slot after Forsaken. Now, you can get this gun from two different ways. You can either buy it from the raid vendor, which is the easiest way to do it, or you can just do the Leviathan raid until RNG blesses you. But let me tell you, RNG is, for some reason, a bitch when it comes to this hand cannon. Versatility-wise, guys, it is a hand cannon, and you will be limited to short to mid-range fights. But I really like it in running gun situations. The gun possesses two perks, and it makes it just a monster in PvE, Outlaw and Rampage. Now, if you want to make this gun even nastier, you can even masterwork its max size. Overall, Midnight Coup is a fantastic, probably the best hand cannon in PvE. Number four, guys, man, we're just hitting all the raid weapons. An Agro Address. This is an adaptive energy pulse rifle. It'll be moved to the primary slot after Forsaken. You can also buy this weapon from the raid vendor or complete the Leviathan raid until RNG gives it to you. Versatility, guys, it's an adaptive pulse, which is like a good sweet spot for me personally. I, I really like the adaptive pulses in PvE. It's good for, for all ranges, short, mid, long range. And lethality-wise, guys, the weapon is truly underrated. It comes with Kill Clip plus Outlaw and is a huge reason why this weapon is on this list. And it also comes with a mag size of 39. A very good pulse rifle for PvE. Number five, guys, Ikelos Shotgun. What is it? It's a power shotgun that would be moved to the secondary slot after Forsaken. Now, you get it by defeating the seventh wave of Escalation Protocol on Mars, depending on if it's dropping that week or not. Now, versatility-wise, guys, like Acreus, you are pushed into the short game. But lethality-wise, oh my god, the perks and mag size 
is what makes this shotgun a PvE monster. So Trench Barrel, which is unique only to this weapon, allows for increased weapon damage, accuracy, and handling after landing a melee hit. Now the perk doesn't last that long, and it does have a steeper damage fall off but it is a melt monster if you get close enough. I know I'm mentioning a lot of weapons on this list, but this Ikelo shotgun is a must have. So at number six guys, play a D's corrector. I know, when was the last time you even heard of this one? Look, this is a clan favorite of ours, something that my clanmate Dimitri loves and swears by. It is a lightweight energy scout rifle that will be moved to the primary slot after Forsaken. Now this scout comes from future war cults and was a season one reward that I don't believe you'll be able to get after Forsaken. So super unfortunate there. Versatility wise, 200 round per minute scouts have never really been my jam when it comes to PvE, but this one is really good for all ranges. Lethality wise guys, it's got high caliber rounds, which is very much overlooked in PvE. And the weapon also comes with Rampage. Guys, if you've got this gun, if you actually got it from Future War Cults and Faction Rallies, lock it in. Number seven is a, is a classic by this point. Nameless Midnight guys is a precision frame scout rifle that would be moved to the primary slot after Forsaken. Now this scout rifle comes from Zavala after turning in some tokens into him and hopefully you'll get it in its loot pool. I know that you could get it from his strike quest line. Versatility wise guys, despite it being in precision frame scouts, I use this weapon for all ranges. And for the longest time, it was my go-to scout rifle for trials. Explosive payload is the sole perk that won me multiple 1v1s in scout versus scout fights. Maps like Eternity Man, I used to have so many people tied with me on Eternity with their mind of multi-tools and Nameless Midnight would eat them up. Now in PvE, it offers that little bit of AOE damage that I still appreciate. Definitely a weapon worth locking down though, guys. At number eight, guys, one I recently reviewed as well, Sleeper Simulant. And yes, this is with the Catalyst. It's an exotic linear fusion rifle in the power slot that will remain in the heavy slot after Forsaken. Now, there's a lot involved in obtaining this weapon. Again, guys, down below will be links on how to get this in depth. But is the Catalyst required? Not required, but highly recommended. You see, guys, you gain accelerated coils plus deeper pockets. So your charge time will now drop from 850 to 700. That's faster than main ingredient. Versatility wise, I think it's one of the more adaptable power weapons. It doesn't really require you to land crit shots to get good damage in. Now the weapon could be better DPS wise. I saw Fallout here recently did a video, of course he was comparing all of the most powerful DPS weapons in the game to each other. But where the gun shines is against those bosses and majors that just know how to move out of your crosshairs. So I personally think it's gonna prove to be valuable against the Scorn after Forsaken drops. Number nine guys, Warcliff Coil. This is an exotic rocket launcher in the power slot that will remain in the heavy slot after Forsaken. And you can get this from an exotic Ingram or Xur. And the catalyst is not necessarily required. It helps, it gives you pinpoint guidance module so that extra tracking is really nice, but it's not required. Personally, it's my favorite rocket launcher in the game. You have to keep your engagement somewhat close though due to the spread of its rockets. It does do great damage for adds and majors and even pretty good DPS against bosses. Now before we say number 10, I do want to throw out some honorable mentions. The Scout Rifle Manananan is a wonderful Scout Rifle to have in PvE. I would say and argue that I like it even more than Nameless Midnight. Nameless is more or less that classic. Better Devils is also still a really good one, even though I find that I, I like Midnight Coup a lot more. But even more than Midnight Coup, even though a lot of people won't agree with this, DFA is one of my favorite PvE weapons. All right, guys, so at number 10, Crimson. I know, I know some of us weren't expecting this one. It's an exotic hand cannon though, guys, that's in the kinetic slot, and it will be moved to the primary slot after Forsaken. You can get this from an exotic Ingram or from Xur. Now, is the catalyst required? No, it's not. It does give you a hefty boost to range, but it's not required. Now, versatility-wise, guys, it's a hand cannon, but it behaves very much like a short-range pulse rifle. You stack that catalyst with it, though, guys, and you essentially got one. Lethality-wise, it does some pretty hefty damage in PvE. Now, for me personally, I was under-leveled a lot for raid activities. So Crimson kept me alive until I got my power level up. And not only does it keep you alive, Cruel Remedy grants the perk, of course, to get regeneration, but it also refills your entire magazine upon precision kills. 
So I think a lot of us associate Crimson as being a PvP only weapon, but it is an excellent choice in PvE. Well guys, those are my 10 weapons as well as my honorable mentions. I know some of people are gonna ask, hey, what about Darcy? Well, I gotta say, Darcy and even Borealis, because I've done DPS testing myself, Borealis has some very good DPS numbers once you proc its exotic perk. And there's ways to, of course, keep that exotic perk going. But Whisper of the Worm is such a good power sniper rifle that I just don't see myself using anything outside of that. And that was before I even got box breathing. Now that I've got box breathing with Whisper, I think it just outclasses all the other sniper rifles. Well guys, that is my list for PvE. Shout out to my clan mates for helping me get this list together. Some of these weapons I've definitely reviewed individually, but it's nice to put them all on a list together. As far as PvP goes, because I will be putting a list like this together for PvP, I'm hoping to keep it to 10 weapons. I think it's going to be more than that. But we'll know more tomorrow after we watch the stream on the TTK update that's coming at the end of this month, and I'll have a better idea of what weapons that I would want to hang on for in Forsaken. Well, guys, that is the video. Thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.